Welcome Mavericks to the premiere of Top Gun Maverick at Exarban Cinema. I'm Dr. Harley Barmore, Director of UNO's Military Connected Resource Center. It is my great pleasure to visit with University of Nebraska System President Ted Carter. President Carter is also a veteran, having served 38 years in the United States Navy before retiring as a Vice Admiral. He logged more than 6,300 flight hours and set an American record for carrier arrested landings. He's with us today to discuss Top Gun School, jet fighters, and perhaps more importantly, the time he met Tom Cruise. President Carter, thank you very much for being here today. Harley, it's great to be with you. So what do you remember about the original movie? So, uh, you know, I was a young lieutenant flying F-4 Phantoms off the USS Midway in the early 80s. It was my first operational uh, tour. And to get selected to go to Top Gun, before anybody even knew there was a movie or knew it, it was a big, big deal. Uh, is usually they sent one crew out of one squadron per year. And it was during that time that the Navy accepted this idea of creating a movie while I was there. When the first script of Top Gun came out and was shown to the faculty and the staff at Top Gun, they didn't like it. In fact, they said, there's no way we're doing this movie. It was that bad. To give you an example, the beginning scene of the original script had an airplane taking off out of Miramar in San Diego, California, and landing on an aircraft carrier in the Indian Ocean. So there were just some basic ideas of geography that didn't make any sense. You completed Naval Fighter Weapons School, also known as Top Gun, in 1985. Now I've heard some of my military friends describe going through weapons school as earning your PhD in your aircraft and tactics. Um, what was the experience like for you? Now I was you know, 24 years old when I went to Top Gun. And uh, back then it was only a five week program. So it was very intense. You flew twice a day, a lot of academics. And then the expectation when you graduate, and this is the privilege that you wear this patch for the rest of your life, you get this plaque. This is, there's no such thing as a Top Gun trophy. This is the closest equivalent to it. You, there's an expectation that you teach for the rest of your life. And I did that. I mean, I took that on board. I, you know, you become a training officer. Uh, doesn't matter whether you go on to command or different levels. You're expected to take the principles of what Top Gun gave you and become a teacher for the rest of your life. Um, now, you also met Tom Cruise. How did that come about? Yeah. When the original actors were coming to Miramar, they asked myself and another student to meet them, take them to the officers club, which is made famous in the movie, uh, make sure they had enough beer in them that they might struggle in the swimming pool the next day because they wanted to make sure that they wrung these guys out a little bit. So I met Tom Cruise. We hung out for about four hours and uh, we did have a few beers. And uh, he was inquisitive about A, why we did the business that we did, uh, he was very curious that we didn't make more money doing it, and he wanted to know about the excitement and the, the speed of it. Well, Tom Cruise, as Pete Mitchell, had probably the coolest call sign ever with Maverick. Did you have a call sign? And if so, how did, uh, how did you come about? The truth is, your squadron mates pick your call sign, and it's usually either tongue-in-cheek or for something really dumb that you've done in your life. Uh, in my case, my call sign was Slapshot. Uh, and it was a uh, throwback to my hockey playing days because I had a really bad slap shot. So it's the uh, F-18, or the Super Hornet, uh, that is portrayed in this movie. Yeah. Now that's a $70 million machine. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the unique characteristics about it? The, the biggest difference in the F-18 uh, Super Hornet, especially the F variant, which is the two-seat variant, you'll see a lot of that in the movie, is you can actually decouple the two cockpits. So even though they're, in, they're encased in the same airplane, those two cockpits can operate independent of each other. As an admiral, I flew in the backseat of the F-18 Super Hornet, and I was amazed at how much you could do independent of what the front seater was doing. How have the lessons that you learned uh, while flying with the Navy and as being an admiral uh, affected your leadership at the University of Nebraska? You know, running the University of Nebraska is a complex, large organization, 52,000 students, 16,000 faculty and staff. And the lessons that I learned from aviation as a team sport still apply here. Okay, Admiral, President, Sir. Any final comments? Uh, so I think this movie is actually going to be those rare number two movies where the second one is better than the first this will be the best aviation cinematography that's ever been done. Even though the scenes will look like they're not real, I know from the people that did the movie, this is all real flying, and they're actually flown by real naval aviators. And the actors 
are in the jets. They're not in the front seat, they're in the back seat, but this movie is unique in that way. You know, the premiere of Top Gun was actually shown on board the USS Midway. Tom Cruise lands in a helicopter on the flight deck of the USS Midway to great fanfare. So the first point I want to make is he and I met at the beginning of my flying career, uh, and I'm no longer flying and he is, but I have 355 more landings on the carrier Midway than he does, so I want to get that out there up front. All right, so go, go Mavericks. Mavericks. So, go, go Mavericks. Mavericks. Oh, I better do that again. I did the loper sign. <laughs>